The task is, is to identify such quadratic polynomials that satisfies the following equation. Let's make some assumptions based on the information provided. Specifically, we know that p is a quadratic polynomial. Thus, let's write it general form. Now, let's write it for other members of the sequence. And finally, let's combine written general forms of polynomials and write the whole sequence together. Note that we put all terms containing coefficients a and b together. You can stop the video here and check the corresponding transitions. At this stage, let's analyze a bit more in details each bracket and group together the different powers of x. Therefore, for the terms in front of coefficient a, we will have the following expression, and doing the same operations for b will lead up to this form. By combining coefficients in front of a, b, and c together, we can come up with the following representation of the sum. Ok, and now the idea will be to simplify expressions in the brackets to ultimately end up in the form like this, where f are some abstract forms of the coefficients in front of power of x. Then, knowing that the whole expression equals x squared, we will equal the first coefficient to 1 and the last two to 0, ultimately ending up with a linear system of three equations with three unknown variables. Okay, the plan is clear, but how do we practically do it? But I mean, I mean, I mean, right now, like specifically, what are we going to do? Firstly, we need to compute these three patterns. In this particular case, we could have computed them by directly adding the members of the sequence. But of course, it's not an optimal solution. And imagine if you were given a longer pattern, this approach would not work. Thus, let's try to compute these sequences by finding a general rule for the sums. Let's start with these two sequences. These are arithmetic progressions, and all pupils from middle school learn how to derive the formula for the sum of an arithmetic progression. For those who forgot, here's an idea of the derivation. Again, you don't need to memorize an exact formula, quite opposite. If you memorize it by heart, you may mess up with some coefficients, but if you understand the principle, you can always derive it. Therefore, feel free to stop the video here and check out the idea of the derivation for the arithmetic series. Once we computed the sums of two arithmetic series, we can plug the results into the original sequence and come up with its simplified forms. But we still need to find a way how to compute this sum of consecutive squares. I'm sure some people who watch this video are familiar with the formula for this sequence, but should those who do not know this expression by heart just leave now when we are so close to the solution? I'm leaving! <laughs> of course not. Also, even if you know the exact expression, it's always good to think about it. And since in Math Olympiad students are always given hours for the given set of problems, it may not be a bad idea to spend a few minutes to double check your hypothesis. Let's derive the formula for the sum of consecutive squares from 1 to n. Firstly, let's write a sequence of consecutive numbers and compute the sum of a few consecutive values. For instance, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 10 and so on. So the idea is quite clear. Let's do the same for the sequence of consecutive squares for the same numbers. Now let's check the ratio of these two sums for the first few elements. We can also notice that in general the form of this ratio can be written as the following. From this equation we can write an expression for the general form of the sum of consecutive squares as 2 in our abbreviation. But wait a moment, we just derived the general form for the sum of arithmetic series which is S1. Therefore, we can plug in the expression for S1 into the equation for S2 and derive the general formula for the sum of consecutive squares. Finally, given the derived general formula, we find the sum of consecutive squares in our particular case. Therefore, now we have all components to proceed to the final step of the solution. By grouping the coefficients in front of the powers of x together, we end up with the following equation. Now, Recall that this expression should be equal to x squared. Therefore, we can derive the equations for the coefficients in front of the powers of x. Now we can solve the system of linear equations ending up with the following answers. You can stop the video here and try it yourself. Finally, we use the found coefficients to write the exact formula of the polynomial. Yes! However, if you didn't solve this problem, but eager to apply the ideas we just discussed, here is an analogous math olympiad problem I encourage you to try. Is there a non-periodic function f defined for all values such that the following condition will be met for all x? Feel free to post your solutions, ideas or just thoughts about this problem in the comment section below. 
Do not be afraid if you do not know the exact solution. Try to start and we will discuss your ideas. Every comment will receive a response. Also, if you like the content of the video, please take a few moments to give it a sum up since it does help to understand your preferences. And for sure, do not forget to subscribe to the channel. And now we go to the solutions of the mother Lipiot problems that were given in the previous videos. But before we go to the solutions, additional thanks to the viewers who posted their ideas and tried to solve the proposed puzzles. Let's start with the puzzle described in the first video. A and B are the positive values satisfying the following equation. The task was to compare these two expressions. As usual, there are multiple solutions possible and I'm going to describe one of those. Firstly, let's rewrite the given equation and the expressions we want to compare. The multiplication of these two equations will lead us to the following form. Here, recalling that B is a positive value, we can decide that the right part is higher, which will lead us to the final solution. The problem is solved. Now let's check the problem posed in the second video. We know that the given quadratic equation has two real roots. Then each of the coefficients of the equation increased by one. Could it be that both roots increased by one. Let's assume that x1 and x2 are the roots of the given quadratic equation. Now we can use Vieta's formulas for the sum and the multiplication of the roots. After each coefficient increased by one, the equation will have the following form. And Vieta's formulas can be written like this. Solving this system of equations with respect to b and c, we arrive to the solutions that b equals 5 and c equals 9. However, since the discriminant of this polynomial is negative, we come to the contradiction with the fact that the polynomial should have two real roots. Therefore, the described situation is impossible. It's not impossible. Thanks for staying till the end, and I hope to see you back by the other videos devoted to mathematics, logic, and neuroscience. See you soon. Bye-bye.